So we're going to do our two together. Um, Steve has the wonderful speaking voice, and I'm the other guy. You can you tell you that. So um, this is actually going to be a little different from the start. Um, we work in sound, um, uh, as the title implies. So um, since sound work needs to unfold over time, we're going to take a bit of our time uh, listening uh, as well as um, reading, talking, and other stuff. Yammering on. Yammering on. <clears throat> the soundscape uh, originally refers to our naturally incurring uh, sonic environment. The term was brought into prominent usage uh, by the research of Armory Schaefer in the 1960s, culminating in, in his landmark book, The Tuning of the World, <clears throat> in 1977. The term has uh, grown to include how we understand the relationship between all sounds, composed or not, in extra musical terms. At its simplest definition, acoustic ecology describes the sonic relationships and causalities amongst the environment and the creatures in it. Through listening, we can gain a unique understanding of the world we inhabit, one that often augments and contrasts with the world that we see. So we, we work in, in the soundscape for this particular project, um, and acoustic ecology is the larger context in which soundscape studies exist. The Island Soundscape Project is an interdisciplinary nexus for research and creative work in art, education, history, philosophy, and environmental studies. The project is part of a field of study known as acoustic ecology or soundscape ecology, an aspect of the larger contemporary field of sound studies. The Island Soundscape Project seeks, to, seeks collaborations with local land trusts, historical societies, arts organizations, and schools to promote the idea of the soundscape in both the identity and preservation of the various coastal and island communities in Maine. This project, in part, uh, <clears throat> aims to bring humane students from multiple disciplines into a direct relationship with Maine's coastal and island communities to demonstrate and to promote the enriching possibilities of soundscape studies. And indeed, we can, we can introduce two of them, our researchers. The third one is in Florida, so we didn't have money to fly her up. Uh, but uh, Agana Cavacanti, who is over here, is one of our researchers. We barely is right there. Okay. <laughs> The Island Soundscape Project is currently working on two specific projects. We are working with the Great Cranberry Island Historical Society to create an immersive soundscape. The recording for this uh, is mostly complete. The soundscape composition, which includes material from the five islands that comprise the town of Cranberry Isles, will be installed uh, this winter and will premiere with the season opening of this historical society uh, in the spring of 2023. We're also working with Haystack Mountain School of Crafts on Deer Isle to incorporate soundscape work as part of the school's overall community presence. We recently taught a very well-received workshop on soundscape recording and composition as part of Haystack 20, uh, Haystack's 2022 course catalog. And luckily they got almost the exact same presentation you guys did. <laughs> <clears throat> So um, we're going to play you some examples uh, of some of the material that we've collected over the summer, um, along with our, our, uh, our student researchers um, on uh, both uh, the Cranberry Isles and on Deer Isle. Um, and <clears throat> these will demonstrate uh, uh, a, a variety of, of collection methods, um, in this case, uh, your standard sort of microphones ca uh, capturing airborne audio, kind of you know, like that. Um, and this uh, this audio in particular was uh, was recorded by Adriana uh, um, at Bear Island, uh, as you can see in June. I got a.
I think Steve agrees that one of the reasons we really like this and played it is um, if you look at the photograph, it, it has sort of a pastoral coast of Maine effect. Um, and then when you listen to what Adriana recorded just with, with stereo microphones in the air, it gets a very different sense. It doesn't feel like a pastoral in any way. Um, and yet that grinding metal sound of a long gangway to a floating pier that goes up and down with the tide is part, absolutely part of the soundscape uh, of the Cranberry Islands. I'm hitting the buttons from now on. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, so this next recording uh, was made using a pair of hydrophones. Um, uh, which are basically microphones meant to go in the water. <clears throat> and here you can see us getting the hydrophones sort of uh, out. Basically, you want to get them past the rocks so that they don't bang against the rocks and just sitting down in the ocean. <clears throat> this is at the mouth of the Bay of Fundy uh, on Grand Manan Island, um, <clears throat> which isn't one of the Islands that was uh, that was part of the scope of our uh, specified projects, but it was an opportunity that just uh, sort of blundered our way, or we blundered its way. Um, and this is a, a this soundscape is not the sort of soundscape that one thinks of when one thinks of birds and frogs, um, but yet this is what one experiences listening underwater. So I want to just mention two things. We've, been, we've heard a little bit about protocols, which is sort of how scientists deal with data and, and eventualities. And Steve and I have developed a really wonderful protocol where he goes and does dangerous stuff. <laughs> and I perch above him and tell him everything used to be wrong. So it's great. this is a perfect example of that. But I, I also want to say that, um, and I'll say before we listen, when we, when we heard this, we thought we were hearing uh, uh, some stridulating creature, right? Some creature that rubs its body parts together and makes a sound. This is a very unusual set of sounds that you'll hear. And uh, when we returned to the cabin of our host on Grand Manan, we, we said, what do you think this is? And she said, oh, I bet that's dolphins. And we said, really? It sounds more like crickets that are drowning or something. Um, and so when we got back, we did a little research and by golly, she nailed it. We, we believe it's dolphins. If you can hear, there's sort of several different pitches that go simultaneously, and that's sort of buzzing noise, and that's what we believe is this, if it is our dolphins uh, communicating. And it's kind of interesting to note, and I don't know if you can see it in the distance here, but the ferry that comes to Grand Manan, which is one of the public transport on and off the island, 
um, in Brunswick. Uh, right. So we have hydrophone uh, recordings of the ferry coming in and, and leaving. And we can assure you that there is no way those dolphin, dolphins can communicate when that ferry is anywhere near them. So uh, one of the interesting things to sort of bear in mind as you listen to the world is how man has screwed it up as much as he has when you look at the world, right? I mean, there's all kinds of problems of pollution and, and noise pollution under seas is pretty dramatic. And this next, um, next uh, sonic capture um, is, this is great. So that and that are two um, seismic uh, contact microphones. <clears throat> and they're magneted up onto the, uh, this, uh, the cable attachment. Uh, at the end of the cables of the Deer Isle Bridge, <clears throat> from the bridge that goes from Sedgwick to Deer Isle, and uh, <clears throat> Deer Isle being where um, uh, where Haystack is, so that's the, that's the, the connection. Um, <clears throat> all you'll hear is uh, vibration um, coming th through those two microphones. There's no audio, you know, airborne microphone sound in this. It's all traffic uh, flowing over the bridge and then uh, down through the cable and then being, being picked up right at this, this point at, this, uh, at, the, at, the, at the bridge attachment. And uh, the photograph was taken by Sabrina Sudal, who's our third uh, um, uh, researcher this summer. And she's right there. And, uh, she just graduated from uh, from UMaine this summer with a uh, with a double major in um, uh, music and uh, studio art, uh, and she's now down in Florida um, doing something doing something crazy. <clears throat> so, uh, so I do want to reemphasize the, the Deer Isle Stonington Bridge is a suspension bridge. If any of you have seen it. Um, much like the Golden Gate Bridge, only in a much smaller scale. So what we're actually recording is the the seismic activity in the carriers of the cables that carry the bridge. Um, and again, you can see how incredibly dangerous the work that we do is. Um, so we were, we were at least 12 feet in the air. Oh, more than that. Probably should be said that all, all the stuff you're hearing has been not processed in any way. It's it's not synthesis or I mean it's been EQ'd a little bit to make the to make it more um sort of listenable through speakers in, in a home stereo environment. But other than that, that's that's what uh, this last uh, recording is um this is yet another hydrophone recording. Um, but as the caption says, uh, some recordings uh, present anomalous results. Um, we actually have no idea 
uh, uh, what, um, what the sound that we've captured here actually is. Um, this was recorded at Haystack actually kind of a while ago. Um, uh, but, <clears throat> uh, well, I'll talk about uh, it. Yeah, and, and Someone said, Oh, I bet that's dolphins, and then you can go online do a little quick research and go, Yep, that's dolphins. Um, that sound, that cawing sound, we have no idea what it is. We've investigated with marine um, submissions around the world, said, Hey, what is this? No one's given us any, no one knows. The answer was, No one knows. There's lots, I believe someone said, There's lots of stuff down there, and we don't know what it There's is. There's a lot of sound. There's a lot of sound down there. Have any idea. Uh, so that didn't help. We do know that it was fairly close to the microphones. There were two, uh, 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 sorry, two to the hydrophones. There are two yeah. of them that were about 10 feet apart, and it's much louder in one than the other. So sort of triangulating, you can figure the thing's not that far from whatever it is. Uh, other than that, if anybody has any ideas, we would love to identify the sound. I believe Adriana said it was a crow under the water, which we negated because it would drown us. Uh, so, and, and again, there's no airborne mics, that's just two hydrophones, so it's something that's clearly underwater. It's a puzzlement. It's a puzzlement. So before Steve reads this, uh, so this is just a really quick introduction of what we do and some of what we find when we do it. Um, uh, it's, it's a relatively new thing, it's not a completely new thing, but, um, we are really excited about it. We're really interested in bringing it to campus. So uh, uh, if anybody's interested in soundscape research, listening to the world rather than looking at it, all of that stuff, please get in touch. We've already gotten a few people who are, are interested in working with us. We'd love to expand the community here on campus. So we've got uh, two projects uh, on the very near horizon. Um, uh, the first one is uh, the sound Island Soundscape Project will partner with uh, Maine Coast Heritage Trust to research, conceptualize, and found a listening preserve, uh, possibly the first such preserve in the country, um, uh, somewhere uh, on or near the coast of Maine. And the next project that we're also looking at is um, we're going to be applying for a fellowship with the Scudic Institute um, to develop a sound map of Acadia National Park or at least parts of Acadia, Acadia National Park um, to collect both qualitative and quantitative data points to help understand the sonic environment of the park. And that will, much like uh, Justin talking about the seed grant, that will be a long project, but hopefully Scooting will be able to fund it uh, over time. We've talked with them and they seem very, very interested. 
think that's it. And that's Thank it. you very yeah. much. Thank you so much.